Jason Nash is coming out to address the fact that people have been saying that the vlog squad members have been shading him going live on TikTok. A little while ago, people felt like Heath, Zayn, and Matt might have been talking down on Jason when talking with Trevor Wallace about people who go live on TikTok, and it seems Jason finally sat down to watch the clip for himself after not wanting to see it. Why is everybody <laughs> going live on TikTok now? Is that, Apparently, is that the there's new? a lot of money. money. Mm. But like, I don't know how much. we see him. Yeah. <laughs> Apparently the money, the money oh, there is, is okay. big. Is... You make good money when you do the battles. That's when they're like, all like, all right, come on, let's get us to like this many oh, likes and this many no. hearts. Every come on, I guys. See the, I need to see the amount that they make after one battle. Like, I just is, need to see what they're no doing amount. that for. I did it, Heath, I did it for Jason. Wait, there's, there's, Wait you what? did it for Jason? <laughs> yeah, I gave him a galaxy. Oh, you should have seen his reaction. He was flipping. He was doing backflips when I what's said that a, galaxy. What's a galaxy equivalent to? It's, it's, oh, it's like, like 20 bucks. bucks. Yeah. But dude, they, <laughs> kids are going to run their parents' <laughs> accounts dry because of this. Oh, oh Kids are going to bankrupt mom and dad by sending galaxies. I'll tell yeah. you right now, if I found out my kid was sneaking using my credit card to pay for galaxy yum yum but hot that's sauce, why I, would do be, it. I would be living. Jason was defending the clip saying that he felt like people were taking it out of context and that they didn't mean it the way that it probably comes across, but at the same time says that he doesn't expect them to actually understand his need for doing what he is doing, wanting to provide for his family, but also wanted to say that he does enjoy it at the end of the day, what he's doing, and he has a community over there on TikTok Live that gets him excited to do it. I saw, I saw the podcast clip on Unfiltered about it a long time ago, and then my chat was like, Zayn and Heath hate you, Zayn and Heath hate you, all this stuff. And then I watched the clip, and I actually, I actually like wouldn't, I didn't watch anything. I'm, like, I'm not gonna watch it. I know Zayn and Heath aren't gonna, uh, don't mean anything by it. And then I watched it, and I was like, you know, when stuff is taken out of context, when stuff is clipped, it is a completely different ball game. Oh yeah. And um, and you know it, I I don't expect them to get it. No. You know what I mean? Like, I, I don't expect anyone to understand what it is. Even, even as I'm sitting here with you guys, I don't expect you guys to get it. Like, it's its its own community. Yes. It's its own. The people are playing a game. Um, and and every, every morning when I get on, the same people are there to see me and see the live and, and participate in it. And it's um, it's been amazing. And I've said this during the other videos while covering this story that I see why Jason would rather do this than something else because it probably is such a massive ego booster for him just to see that he can set up his phone in his kitchen and go live and people will just send him money because they like him. And having that happen every single day, that's for sure going to go to your head and make you feel good in some way, somehow. I'm sure he feels like valued. Even when other people are saying it's embarrassing i'm sure it's easy to ignore when you see people willingly spend their hard-earned cash on you so i can see why he's doing this over what other people have suggested like a retail job or door dashing jason also thinks that he's gotten ahead of the curve in some way when it comes to this community on tiktok where people battle and go live because he feels like it might just turn into something bigger, like how in the beginning when people were posting on YouTube, people were like, why are you doing that? Or when people were posting on Vine, they're like, what are you doing? Or even TikTok, when people thought it was just ridiculous dances and nothing more, but then it really did change people's lives. And I think Jason is really hoping that this is gonna be that life-changing next thing. If I felt like it was, I just I just know that it, it, it is something. And I know that when I started Vine, People said the same thing to me. They're like, what are you doing? Why are you doing Vine? You know? And I was like, okay, this is what I'm doing. And then I did YouTube and people were like, why are you doing YouTube? And I was like, cause I'm doing it. And I feel like when you're first to something that can really uh, pan out. Mm -hmm. um, and I don't have anything else right now. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's, that's, not, that's not true. That's not true. But but hopefully it can it can grow into something where it's like, um, I'm selling tickets this summer from it, uh, and and I'm I'm trying to do it in a way where uh, it's different. They all sat and talked about how live has been able to change people's lives and hope that Jason can somehow channel this into his comedy or something. And he ultimately just seemed super unbothered by what everyone has been saying about him in terms of doing this, especially, you know, the vlog squad. He's not trying to take it personally, what he's been hearing people say and what they've said, as he's really just out here trying to grind. 
but there have been aspects of doing this that have affected him that he doesn't like. And there have been those that have not liked Jason going live that have really just taken things into their own hands and really done some effed up stuff to him and his family. Recently, I had talked about the fact that Jason had been swatted and this person had actually faked a 911 call pretending to be Jason. It was all happening while he was on live. I'm not sure if this person thought that it was going to be funny. But this is not something to joke about and is a really serious situation. And Jason recently sat down with his wife to talk more about their scary experience of the police showing up with a helicopter above their house saying that someone had actually called 911 pretending to be Jason, saying that he had harmed his own girlfriend, ending her life, which he doesn't have a girlfriend since him and his fiance got married, but that's what was said on the 911 call that he had harmed his own girlfriend. And he says that they were able to actually track down the call and have a recording of it as well and was just really urging people not to ever do this to him again. It's literally so horrifying and scary and even worse of a situation hearing about how it all played out because someone really could have gotten hurt in this situation because the police were on high alert, armed and ready, obviously doing their job, but Jason and his wife and his son were just totally caught off guard and things could have been much worse than they were. His wife Naveen says that she was in the house with Wyatt, who is Jason's son. Jason was out in the back and they heard something outside, but just barely. And so they went to the door to try and see what was kind of going on. And there they were, all these armed cops pointing at them with their weapons. And she says that it's even scarier looking back because of what could have happened since they couldn't even really hear what the cops were saying prior to opening the door, which means that they could have busted down the door and things could have been so much worse. But what's extra scary to me is the fact that um, all these officers were there and they were trying to get us to come out and like surrender or whatever. Yeah. But we didn't hear them. <laughs> so like... That's that kind of worried me. Like I heard something, but it didn't feel like they were at our door. Yeah, they weren't very loud for. But they that got kind of they situation. got pretty loud, like when we saw them. But I was like, were they going to like bust the door down? The second I opened it, they were like at the door with guns, and so I was like, what? Like they could have accidentally shot me. Jason also talked about how things could have been worse for him as when he came outside, he brought the tripod with him and immediately got scared that they would think it was a weapon. But the thought looking back that they could have perceived it that way is just horrifying. I said to the cops, I go, I've been swatted, I've yeah, been swatted. Yeah, yeah. And, so and you know, I have the stick in my hand with the phone. So now I think, oh, they think this is a gun. Oh my, they started You brought it with it. you? Yeah. Yeah, I for some reason I was like, guys, I think I hear screaming. And I, I guess my instinct is to like bring them everywhere to, to <laughs> and so I bring it with me yeah. and, uh, and then I drop that shit quick. Yeah. And, um, and I say, I say, I've been swatted. I've been swatted. He said the cops didn't even know what swatting was. So they had no idea what he was even saying when he came out. And later he ended up having to explain to him that he was not the one who called and his wife was alive and she was okay. And it was somebody else pretending to be him. And like I said, they mentioned that they were able to trace the call and from how they were talking about it, it seems like it was a kid or something, which is just insane. Like, how does a kid get this idea? It's scary to think about. Because something it, bad really could have happened. It could have been really bad because we didn't hear the door. Like, it, it's like, it could have gone so dark and like, you have your kids there. Like, I think someone thought it was going to be this really funny thing on live. And like, even though there is like, obviously we can sit and laugh about it. It's really not funny. No. At the end of the day, like someone, your kids could have gotten hurt. You could have gotten hurt. I <laughs> could have gotten yeah. hurt. Like if they thought you shot someone, they could have come in like guns blazing. Yeah. And like, that's just not funny. And I think maybe you didn't think it through. Um, But we don't forgive you. They did trace the call and there's detectives on it. Yeah. And and the detective gave me his card. Yeah. And they're gonna be following it up. So, the so person, you should probably tell your parents that you're yeah. about to get in a lot of trouble. So the person that did it, um, the call was traced and it was recorded. I guess that's basically everything. 
One could only hope that people realize just how horrifying this whole thing is and that it really is a serious thing not to be joked about and it is illegal for someone to fake a 911 call, but that is what Jason and his wife had to say about their experience and also what Jason recently had to say about hearing people say the vlog squad has been shading him going live. Let me know what you guys think about all of this in the comments. I love you guys so much and I will talk to you in the next video. Bye guys. Thank <laughs> you.